Hi, and welcome to another episode of D-Link TV q and I'm Mike. And I'm George. And we're here to take your questions and answer them right here, only not today. <laughs> Today's a little <laughs> bit special. We're going to do another one of our how-to episodes because we're always talking about dynamic DNS and, you know, why you'd want to use it or more like use your dynamic DNS when we're talking about setting up like the DNS 323 for FTP and right. things like that. But we've never actually shown you how or discuss why you'd want to use that. Yeah. So For example, kind of the focus. port forwarding episode and the virtual server discussions, right. that allows your router to take traffic and send it to a specific device on your network, like a 323, but that only is helpful if you can get to your router from the internet in the first place. Right. And so Dynamic DNS helps that. So before we forget, you're probably already at dlingtv.com, but if you're not, go there because you can enter new questions. Right, because you might, might be at YouTube. There you go. Yeah. They so are posted other places. There so. is a little web form in the upper corner that you can fill out and have your, your questions submitted right here that we can answer. And there are other videos out there besides ours. So yeah, take a look around. There's all sorts <laughs> of cool stuff to play with. Absolutely. So today <laughs> we're going to talk about what is dynamic DNS and why we would use it. Right. So let's start with what is dynamic DNS. Okay, DNS is dom Domain Naming Service. What it does is it maps easy-to-remember names, like say dlink.com, to the IP address, which is you know, four byte address. You know, it could be you know 63.123.12.13 or something. Those kind of numbers, not only are they not so easy to remember, but in the case of DSL and cable modem connections, which most people have at their home, they can change because they use dynamic IP because it makes it easier for your service provider, whether that's a phone company or cable company, to manage their pool of addresses. Because they only have a certain amount. Right. So especially with like DSL if you're, you know, offline, they can give that IP address to other people. Right. And so, so you, now, you only get it when you need it, basically. Right. So the, the difference between the dynamic DNS and static DNS is normally a business like D-Link right. has a static IP address that's ours forever. Right. And we use a, a DNS server has dlink.com tied to our IP address. Right. And that's static forever as long as we keep upping it, I think is you know, 2050 or something like that. And one of the big differences also from a consumer point of view is you usually can get a static IP service, more but expensive. it's going to cost you more. Right. Yeah, but along with it usually comes higher bandwidth, a lot of times it's more symmetrical, like say you want to actually run a business. Right, uh, small business service. Right. Providers usually don't like you doing that from a consumer account right. because they want to plan for the bandwidth. You know, if you're gonna actually run a serious server, a lot of times you get a nasty gram from your provider if they notice too much traffic going upstream. Right. Because the services are really not intended for that. So keep that in mind. And so, so your address is changing dynamically. Right. Dynamic DNS is going to, your router pings the dynamic DNS server. Out in the world. Yeah, from time <laughs> to time and says, hey, this is my new IP right. address. Hey, this is my new IP address. And it just, you know, is easier way to. And so that way, it. it's a configuration inside your router. There's also, our cameras support it and some of the other devices support it. And so the idea is that as it first boots up, it says, okay, I'm, I've just rejoined the network, so I need to request the servers. Here's my name. I want you to map to whatever address I currently have. Right. And then also periodically, because they are um, basically leases. You're getting an IP address for a, a time period. There are a number of services out there that provide dynamic DNS as a service, but D-Link provides a free dynamic DNS address for customers of our routers. So you get one free address. Nice. And so say you go to like the DR655, under tools, dynamic DNS, the tab on the side, in there there's a pull down menu. One of those is dlinkddns.com. And that's through our partner, dynDNS.com. And so it allows you to go in and as we mentioned, you go to the site, you log in, you need it, all you need is an email address, you don't have to pay for anything. Right. The trick is that as long as the address is still being used, it'll stay good forever. Right. And so basically, if you go in and set up an address, you know, mydogfred.dlinkdns.com, and then you never program your router so it never actually activates after 14 days or some such, they'll send you an email saying, warning, it's about to expire. Yeah, hey, did you want this or not? Right. And because so, just like IP addresses, right. they have a specific pool that they have. Well, and the big thing is, you know, they don't want their database to go on forever with a billion, you know, my dog Fred, my dog Fred 23, my dog Fred 13. Right. So the idea is that you go to the site, all it takes is an email address, and then you go through and you pick the name, the, the first part, it's going to be whatever you have, you know, my dog Fred dot dlinkdns.com. And then you say activate, select, whatever the wording is there. They're going to send you an email that to make sure it's real, so it's not just some computer out there trolling trying to fill up their tables. Right. And then you, you acknowledge the email saying, yes, this is real. And then, as you'll see in the screenshots coming up, 
you can go through and set up your router so that it will automatically keep this updated. And it just needs right. the username and password that you used when you set up the account. And that way, your address now, instead of being you know 69.23. whatever, can be my dog Fred. Right. Which okay. Will make your cat Susie really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, then let's go ahead and jump into the video of how to um, set up and configure your dynamic DNS on your router and one of the cameras. And one last thing is once it's all set up, a good way to test it is the ping command. You just go to a command line and type in ping, whatever that name is. You know, you can do it like you know dlink.com, and then it, if the address resolves, right. then you should get a ping response. And you can try that with this, but you need to make sure you enable ping responses on your router. So we'll do that as a screenshot also. Okay. All right. So let's jump into that. Start by logging into your router. Once your router's web-based GUI has been brought up, click on the Tools tab at the top and the Dynamic DNS button to the left-hand side. There you will find a link to the D-Link DDNS service. Click on this to create an account. Once you've created an account, on the D-Link Dynamic DNS page, you can log into the account and create a host. The host name should be something easy that you can remember as part of your URL. After you've chosen the host name, then enter in the public IP address of your router, which should be displayed in the browser IP field just above the new IP address field. Once you save this, that'll create the host name that we will use to create the dynamic DNS entry in our DDI R655. Now that you have your host name, switch back over to your router's interface and enable dynamic DNS. Select the dlink ddns.com service and add it to the server address. The host name is the one that you just created on the dlink ddns site. Enter that all the way in, including the dlink ddns.com extension. After you've entered that, use the same username that you created at the D-Link DDNS site and enter in the password and verify your password. Once you have saved these settings, your router will reboot. Once you have saved the dynamic DDNS settings on your router, you should be able to go outside of your home to another location with an internet access and then type in the URL using the host name first, followed by a dot, followed by dlinkddns.com, and then the port number which you assign to your camera. Once you hit enter, it should bring up the uh, password prompt where you will enter in the username and the password for the camera. This will allow you to get into the interface. So that's how you set up dynamic DNS uh, and configure it on the DIR655 and the DCS6620 internet camera. And if you have one of our other routers, maybe the 625 or the 615, or one of the G routers like 624 or WR2310, they all have the same functionality. The menus look a little bit different, but they're usually in just about the same spot and pretty easy to find. So yeah. it isn't just the 655 that supports it, but we really like that router. It kind of rocks, so buy one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this episode of D-Link TV Q&A. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and point your browser to www.dlinktv.com and fill out the little web form in the upper right corner, and we'll take care of you right here on the air. And thanks for watching. Thank you.